If you're a photographer and have wanted to create composite images in Photoshop, like the one shown here, stick around and I'll deconstruct this one layer by layer. If you don't know, composite images are made up of multiple photos layered on top of each other and blended together to make up a new and unique image. What we're looking at here is a composite of nine different image layers. I started by creating a photograph of a pipe wrench with a white egg in the jaws and had it hanging from a hook overhead. I placed a piece of gray foam core behind it as a backdrop. Then I placed one speed light about two feet away from the wrench on the right side, just slightly forward and at the same height to create a bit of a shadow. Here's the basic photo I started with in Photoshop. Everything was done using CS2, which is an old standalone version of Photoshop from 2005. If you do a Google search, you can find free downloads for CS2, or you can certainly use the latest version if you have the budget for it. Now, I'm not going to teach you all the techniques used to create this image. That would take way too long, and that's beyond what I want to cover today. I will be putting out other videos covering those techniques in the future, so be sure to subscribe to catch those. Today, I just want to give you a basic idea of how an image like this is put together. So for starters, let's take a look at Photoshop. Okay, here we are. We've got our pipe wrench in Photoshop. And over on the right hand side, this is the original photograph that I used to construct this image. And it was taken in the studio with a uh, speed light on the right hand side, uh, cross light with uh, a gray background. And the cross light is at 90 degrees cross light so that we got these dark shadows along the sides. So once I had the photograph, the first thing I needed to do is mask out this area, the gray in the background. And you can see I've done that here. So if you've never done any masking in Photoshop, that would be my first search on Google to find out. There's lots of uh, uh, tutorials out there that would describe it much better than I can on how to do it. So do a Google search on masking in Photoshop and it'll show you how to cut out the background here. Alright, so let's move our original photo out of the way and I want to show you the next thing that's uh, part of this image is layers. And in this particular image I've got nine different layers that I've used to create the image. Now each of these layers has different uh, textures on them in most cases. Now you could uh, incorporate other photographs. You know, if you wanted two pipe wrenches, you could have another pipe wrench on another layer. And layers are stacked on top of each other and a layer that's on the top is visible and, and uh, the ones below that, the ones that are stacked below like this, are visible depending on how opaque the layer above is. So again, the layers is a a technique and a part of Photoshop that's uh, quite involved. If you've never used layers before, again, my second search in Google would be for using layers in Photoshop. Then the third thing I want to look at is textures because all of these layers that I added to the background were uh, textures that you can buy. I buy mine from a company called Flypaper Textures and it's a couple artists, Paul and Jill, and they uh, photograph different things. You can, you can create your own textures. Like, for example, I've made textures out of photographs I've taken of patterns of sidewalks, of concrete, of uh, pine straw, of uh, rusted metal objects. Uh, anything that has a cool texture to it can be used as one of the, your uh, layers in your background. So first of all, what I want to do is show you some of the layers that I've put into this this image. We'll look at this one. That gave us a, uh, a brownish textured background. Looks like it was probably a photograph of a wall, a textured old wall. Um, I used this bluish color background and of course it's blended so that it does blend it with the black so it doesn't really look blue but it gives it a different texture. Then we added a grayish texture, gave it a little, made it a little bit darker. And you, you might notice over here these uh, layer masks, and that would be another Google search. What is a layer mask and how do I create them? And what the layer mask does is allows you to uh, 
have the texture just to affect the background and not the part that's masked out, which would be the pie prints. And in a layer mask, anything that is white is visible. So in, on this particular layer here, layer number three, you notice in the layer mask, the background is white, so it's visible. But the pipe wrench itself is black, which means that the layer does not affect that. That's been masked out. And then we've got another texture here that gives it a kind of a yellowish color. And then we get darker and darker. Oop, I missed that one. There's that darker. All right, so then uh, one thing I want to show you about textures is the blending modes on these. Let's look at this one at the top, this layer number four. Notice right here, this is where our blending mode is. And if we hit that little down arrow, we'll see all the options. I think there's 27 different options, blending options. And in this particular case, I've used hard light and the opacity of that layer is 44%. So let's, let's, let's hard light. Let's look at some of the other ones, darken. It lightens it up a little bit. It has the opposite effect. I use multiply quite a bit. And you can see it's darker. Some of these will not give you a result that you really want to use, but there are just so many options here. It's really cool. Color burn, linear burn, not much of a difference. Lighten, this should give it a, uh, yeah, lightens it. And what else we got here? We've got screen. That's an even lighter. Blend mode, color dodge, that'll give us uh, eh, interesting. And of course, you see the, you know, as we change the opacity, look, if I bring this darker, it lightens it up because we're using a color dodge, or we can bring it down. There's just all kinds of variants there. We can use uh, overlay. I like overlay. That's probably what uh, the original was close to. We can use soft light, hard light, and vivid light. Whoa, that's kind of heavy. But anyway, you got all these different options. And all these options can be used for any of the layers. So you can, it's just the, when you start combining layers and opacities, and you can also use, uh, regular adjustments for that you would use for photographs like uh, curves and color balance, bright and contrast, hue, saturation, all of these adjustments can be used as well on any of the layers. So let's look at hue and saturation for this. And you can see it just a, does the, uh, the background there. Saturation again just plays. Oh, we can make it really intense. We can change the lightness any of those. So again, more options of ways to, to manipulate each of these layers. All right, a couple more. Uh, these were cracks, a cracked layer, uh, and they were masked out. So just the uh, egg shows the crack. So let's, let's uh, turn that one on. You see, we got some black cracks in our egg. And then we've got another one that added some white in there. Let's zoom in so you can see the white. Where's my plus zoom? I see the white and black cracks in the egg. And if we turn those off, there's the black, and there's the white, and there's our just our basic egg. Okay, so then let's get this to fit the screen. And the last layer that I created was a drop shadow. And you can see that here. All right. I've made some adjustments to it. That's not what the the final product looked like, but it's not bad looking. I kind of like it. All right. One other thing I want to talk about is, uh, again, the textures. And I've used a company called Flypaper Textures. I talked about Paul and Jill. And they sell, man, a ton of different textures. Uh, they sell different packs. Like this is the uh, painterly texture pack. And you get all these different uh, textures, high resolution textures, for like 40 bucks, 57 of them. They uh, 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, that's pretty high resolution. 
and like for 40 bucks and they'll have different sales too at different times so black friday i know i bought a couple packs of different textures but that, they're great stuff man they, they put a lot of effort into their uh photographing creating oh, they'll do them with paint canvases all kinds of different things wax um, they just do a beautiful job of creating textures and you can also uh, find textures online free textures online if you do a google search so if you want to start playing around with some of this and don't want to uh, invest any money in it up front find free textures online or you can create your own textures take photographs of things like i said like concrete and uh, pine straw and be creative find different things in nature to use as, as uh, textures anyway i hope you like this little deconstruction presentation and if so how about uh hit the subscribe button i'm going to be doing some more tutorials showing some more of my uh images and having uh having them deconstructed and i'll probably talk more about different tools that i use to to create these so if you want to catch this stuff in the future hit that subscribe button i would really appreciate it have a great day